Welcome back to Advanced Training, Character Modeling, Part 3. I'm Matthew Doyle. We're going to continue in Part 3 by modeling the character's head. And we'll start with a simple cube shape and then align it so it matches the model sheet above the character's neck. Then we'll use the Mesh Smooth tool and we'll use the Pixar Open Subdiv algorithm with four subdivision levels to create basically a sphere instead of a box. The difference is, is our sphere will be made of all quads. So now that we have our sphere, we just need to make sure it matches the size of the head and of course position it in the side view model sheet. Now we're not really going to use this sphere as our character's head. We're just going to use it kind of as a construction plane. We're going to be building with the quad draw tool so that we get proper edge flow. So now we're using the sculpt geometry tool to just go ahead and sculpt the head to fit the model sheet, bringing in the eye cavity there, bringing down the front of the forehead, the top of the head, creating the ears, and so on. Once again, the Sculpt Geometry Tool is a really powerful tool for creating organic shapes very quickly. Otherwise, it would have been very difficult for me to go in and manually move these verts around to get them shaped properly. Once again, we don't need to make this mesh look perfect because we're really just using it kind of as a base when we go into our Quad Draw tool. Continuing with the Sculpt Geometry tool in the side view, we'll create the chin by simply pulling it out. Remember the Sculpt Geometry tool allows you to either paint inwards or outwards depending on whether or not you're holding the control key. If you're using the tool to paint outwards and you hold the control key, it will paint inwards instead. And vice versa, if you are using the tool to paint inwards, you hold down the control key to paint outwards. Here I'm basically flattening the top of the head to match the model sheet. Remember also if you hold down the M key and then click and drag you can change the strength of the brush or decrease it. You can also do the same with the brush size by holding the B key down. You can increase or decrease the size that way. Here we are just matching up the cheekbone area and the chin in the front view. And remember we don't have to do this perfectly. It doesn't have to be a perfect match because this is only a construction plane that we'll be using to do the quad draw tool on top of. We'll sink in the cheekbones here a little better. And you can see we've got some symmetry issues on one side, but we'll correct that shortly. Almost finished here. Now we're going to select the right side by selecting all the faces and then just deleting those. And this way we'll be able to create symmetry by mirroring the left side to the right side. But before we do that, there's a few things we need to do. First, we'll select these interior verts, the edge, and use the scale tool and drag on the X axis until we get them nice and coplanar using the trick I've already showed you. And now we're going to create the ear and attach it to the head. For the ear, we'll just start with a plane. Just like the rest of the head, we don't need it to be perfect. We're going to give it four subdivisions on both the horizontal and vertical axis using the attribute editor. And then in vertex mode, we're going to use these verts to basically create the shape of the ear. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to give us the basic shape of the ear. The important part is that it'll work as a good construction plane when we're using Quadraw to create the proper edge flow of our character. All right, great. So our ear is starting to take shape. We'll just continue to move some of these verts around until we get the outer silhouette of our edge created. We're not too worried about the interior verts, but we'll move them around a little bit as well so that they aren't too crazy. And once we have those done, we can basically extrude the entire plane towards the back of the head to create some thickness to our ear. Then in the side view, we'll just continue to move the verts so that the profile of our ear matches the model sheet. Starting to take shape here. Again, remember, this doesn't have to be a perfect ear. We're just going to use it as a construction plane. So we just want to get those verts to basically match up with the model sheet. And then when we're done, we can go ahead and attach it to the head. Almost finished here. Looking pretty good. Just have a few more verts there at the base to move around. We want to make sure that all of the base verts match up or at least connect to where the head is so that when we do our Boolean operation, we won't have any gaps or any issues there. 
All right, so you may notice that the ear is all black. This is just because the normals are flipped. So we'll go into the normals menu and reverse them. And now it's the proper color. That means all the faces are facing in the right direction. Now we'll select the head and then the ear. And then we'll go into the mesh menu and choose Boolean, Union. And we'll combine them together, making them essentially one object. All right, one more thing. We'll go back into the mesh menu and choose Mirror Geometry so that we have our perfectly symmetrical cat head ready to retopologize. Before we retopologize, let's go ahead and make the cat head slightly transparent so that our polygons from our retopology will be more visible on top of it. To do that, we're going to use a Mel script here. You can see display surface dash x-ray true. And I've added that to a button in my shelf. By using that, we can set just this object to x-ray mode rather than the entire scene. You can see here when I create a cube, it's not in x-ray mode, just the head. So this can be very helpful. That way when we're doing our quad draw, it won't be in x-ray mode, just the head that we're retopologizing. I've also enabled wireframe on shaded for some more visual acuity. And finally, I select the head and choose the make live button at the very top there. You can see highlighted in blue. This will allow us to begin dropping polygons down using quad draw. So let's start with the eyes in the front viewport. We're going to basically draw the polygons that ring the eyes as our starting point. To do that, We'll begin by laying down the verts themselves that make up the polygons. All you have to do is simply click on the surface of the model. And because the model has been made live, the verts that you're laying down as you click will automatically lay down on top of the cat head as our construction plane. So you can see here that I'm drawing each polygon manually with these verts. So we'll just continue around the eyes here. And when we're ready, We'll go ahead and hold down shift and drag across all of those and create the actual four-sided polygons. So we jump into perspective view, we can see exactly what happened by having the surface made live. Now I'd like to go ahead and pull some of these guys outwards towards the nose. And so all I have to do is hold down the tab key and begin pulling those edges. You'll notice as I do so that the verts will snap, creating an actual connection there. Then I can actually move individual verts or edges just by clicking and dragging on them without actually changing the tool. So we'll go ahead and continue to tab and drag this to create a new edge and obviously a new polygon as I do so. You could also do the same thing on the verts themselves. Simply dragging on the verts while holding the tab key will do the same thing. You can really see how powerful QuadDraw is as a retopology tool and how this method helps us to create the cat head with proper edge flow for animation and subdivision. Otherwise, it would have been a pretty tedious task. Let's go ahead and continue on by retopologizing the mouth area. And we'll do the same technique. We'll just start drawing the verts on the mesh by clicking and creating the edge ring that will shape this cleft mouth area. Once again, I'm basically creating the outline of each polygon. Now I hold down shift and drag and create those polygons. Once again, I'll just tweak the verts by simply clicking and dragging on them, not having to change the tool. Quadrill is pretty powerful in this way. There's a lot of things you can do without switching out of it. You can create edge rings by inserting them. You can extend edges or entire borders. You can tweak the verts, the faces, or the edges all in the same tool without changing. All right, so let's prepare to connect the mouth polys to the eye polys. We'll do that using the extend feature. We'll just hold down tab and drag this edge around the nose. We'll need to make some tweaks here to the verts so that it's more properly flowing around the nose here. And of course, matching up with the model sheet. We need to add another edge here. So we'll just hold down control and position it. Tweaking the verts. And now we can go ahead and connect the mouth to the eyes. To do that, we'll just extend and then we'll snap those verts right there at the corner of the nose. All right, so starting to take shape here in the perspective view. Now we're going to extend this edge out, holding tab, to create the bottom part of our eye. And we'll just continue to extend all the way around the eye shape. and tweak the verts, of course, so that it matches the roundness of the top there of the cheeks. 
Once again, holding down tab and extending the edges. Now I want to make sure the bottom kind of matches the top part of the eye, so I'm counting the edges of the top, the subdivisions, and I want to kind of make sure that I have the same number of subdivisions going on my bottom area there. Now here I'm snapping the verts together, but that's not really what I want, so I'm going to undo that, and then I'll just drag it till it just misses the snap, and I'll create a polygon right here, a four-sided polygon between those two, between the top and the bottom part of the eye. All right, so we have our basic eye ring shape here. Just make some tweaks to the verts there. You'll see here in the perspective mode, we went too far back, so easy enough to fix. Just pull them back to the front. And then we can just continue on by extending these edges here. Now we're creating the top part of the cheek. We're going to bring it all the way around. Once again, make sure we jump in perspective so that we're not having issues with our verts going all the way back. Now we're going to extend the faces from the eye back towards the back of the head, and then we're going to go around the ears, just holding down the tab key the whole time to extend those edges and tweaking the verts manually. All right. Starting to take shape here. Just going to pull these back to the back of the head. And we'll connect them there, holding down the shift key. Bring these around, also matching up the ear. And then we'll bring the polygons here back to match up to there. So we've kind of got the basic cage of the top part of the head there. And now we can begin to extrude upwards along the ear and these polygons will snap to the ear itself as we create them. We didn't have to make the ear connected to the head, we could have made it live separately, but this way by bullying it as part of the head, we didn't have to do that. We could just basically keep the entire thing live the whole time without switching to another object. But you can do that, you can have multiple objects and then switch what you have live for Quadra. Now I'm just relaxing the verts so that they have a little bit more of a proportional uh, distribution of the quads. Relaxing is done by holding down the shift key and then simply clicking and dragging. And here I'm basically creating the termination of those quads at the top of the ear. All right, so the interior part of the ear is pretty much finished. I'm just going to continue to do a little bit of relaxation on some of these verts by holding shift and I'm going to set the relax mode in the settings for Quadra to interior vertices so it only relaxes the interior verts of our retopologized mesh. Otherwise it would move the exterior verts and that's not what we want in this case. We want to keep those basically where they are right now. So just continuing to create the cheek area here, just filling in the holes, holding down shift holding down control to add edge rings, and holding down shift again to relax. All right, back in the front view, we're going to select these verts on the center here and scale them until they're coplanar so that we can eventually mirror this side of the face to the other side. That looks good. Now we can continue to create the nose, and we'll do so by simply dropping some verts down holding shift and creating the polygons and just follow the shape of the nose, follow the anatomy here until we have the center hole there, create the connection between the nose and the eye and the brow area and just continue to tweak these verts. Continuing on with the chin line and the jaw line, just dragging those polys out and then we'll connect them with the back of the cheek area here. All right. To continue on, I'd actually like to go into a two-up view. So we're going to create a two-by-two two view, and we're going to change one view to the side view and one view to the front view here. All right. This way we can make sure that everything is basically lining up the way we want it to. So that doesn't look too good. There we go. So now we have the basic jawline beginning here. Back to our perspective mode, helps us to tweak it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and create the jawline. 
following the model sheet for the most part and go all the way up to the ear just extending these polys and then we'll connect them right there and that gives us our basic cage our basic outline of the face we'll just continue to tweak these verts around the jawline a little bit here so we get a nice edge flow we nearly have our completed cage at least the outlines of our cage and we'll get to the point where we can just start to fill in the holes so we're gonna go ahead and do a little relaxation here just to make sure these verts are nicely distributed so holding down shift just we're doing a little relax there now we can start to fill in the holes here we'll start with the forehead we'll just extend out the edges to create new polygons snapping the verts to connect them and using of course the insert edge loop tool where needed all right holding down shift again to relax you can see how nicely that works helps to even everything out here we're just extending in the polygons to fill in the hole of the cheek area and using the insert edge loop tool where needed as well for the most part the topology here is not too important as long as it doesn't stretch when it animates but there's not a whole lot of animation that's going to be happening on the side of the face most of the animation will occur around the eyes and the mouth and that's where you got to be more concerned with the topology now the jawline however the jawline will animate as the mouth opens so we want to make sure the jawline basically matches the jawline of a person in our topology right so we're beginning to fill in the top of the head here as well once again you're starting to see a lot of repetitive work here using the quad draw tool just extending polygons using the insert edge loop tool and the relaxation tool so here we'll create the mouth really just filling in the polygons here and then relaxing them now when I first thought of this character I didn't want him to animate his mouth I didn't want to have him talking or anything so I decided to model him with a closed mouth but later on we may decide to actually give him the ability to talk and we may want his mouth to animate in that case we'll have to model a tongue and teeth and the interior of the mouth as well for now we'll just model him as if he's not going to talk and we'll just close off the mouth here but we want to make sure the edge flow basically follows the shape of the mouth this way by following the proper edge flow if we decide later to give him a mouth we'll be able to very easily do that if we didn't follow the proper edge flow we'd have a lot of problems adding a mouth because then we'd have to basically recreate the entire front part of his face so here we go almost finished with the face area just doing a little extra tweaking here you can also merge verts together by simply dragging them towards each other as I'm doing right now once again a very powerful tool without having to change all sorts of functionality built into it all right so that is basically the front part of our cat's face just a few more tweaks using the relax tool 